but nobody said otherwise. Okay. Um, how about Ms. Garrett? Um, do you see anyone you recognize? Um, only the team that I judged in a prior round, but other than that, no. Okay. I don't believe that creates a conflict, but I will confirm that and then we will get going. I'm going to assume that that's okay. Um, let's. Oh, I, I do want to let you know in case this is a problem. I did observe one of the other teams just when I was watching as a um, as an observer. So I don't know if that matters, but I don't, I don't recognize them in any other capacity. Yeah, I don't think so. I think as okay. long as uh, we think we can be fair and impartial, we're we're good to go. Okay. Thank you. All right. So. Um, me one second here to pull up my case like, materials. Okay. She, that wouldn't be a conflict if she didn't score. Okay. Um, all right, let's call the case of Dakota Weirs versus Lush Fertilizer Inc. Could I please have entries of appearance by the plaintiff? All plaintiff's counsel are muted. Sorry, Your Honor. Good afternoon, counsel. Go ahead and give us your entries. Good afternoon. Um, opposing counsel, members of the jury, jury, and Your Honor. My name is Faith, and today I'll be directing Dr. Casey Rogers, crossing Dr. Devin Williams, as well as providing the opening statement and the closing argument. At this time, my co-counsel will introduce themselves. Thank you, Counsel. Good evening, Your Honor. Uh, my name is Owen, and I'll be directing Dakota Weirs and crossing Blake Doncourt. Thank you, Counsel. Good evening, Your Honor. Opposing counsel and jury, my name is Rachel, and I will direct Carson Durst and cross-examine Skylar Weirs. Thank you, Counsel. And uh, plaintiff's witnesses, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Good afternoon, my name is Nathan and I am Dr. Casey Rogers. Good afternoon, my name is Adam and I am Dakota Weirs. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my name is Coco and I am Carson Durst. Thank you, good afternoon. Entries of appearance by the defense, please. Good afternoon, your honor. My name is Braden Rowe and I will be directing Blake Doncourt, crossing Carson Durst and providing the closing argument. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. I am Nathan Prentice. I will be directing Skyler Weirs and crossing Dakota Weirs. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Your Honor. My name is Alex Kaiser. I will be not only providing the opening statement, but also cross-examining Dr. Casey Rogers and directly examining Dr. Devin Williams. Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. And just for your information, we can hear you, but you sound a little far away. So you might want to speak up or get a little closer to your mic when it's your turn. Um, Understood, if, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, if we could have the defense witnesses introduce themselves, please. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Zoe McCollum, and I'll be portraying Blake Doncourt. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is John Kegel, and I'm going to be Scott today. Thank you. And um, Mr. Kegel, um, just so you know, I, you might have a connection issue, some bandwidth issues. So um, we'll just deal with that as we go. OK. Yes, sir. Good, af Good afternoon. I, I'm Nicholas Stenos and I am Devin Williams. Thank you. Good afternoon. All right. I think next I need to swear in all the participants. Give me one second to pull up the oath.
Bear with me. I had it up a minute ago. All right, if I could have all of the non-witness team members, please raise your right hand. Team members, do you promise that the presentation you are about to give will faithfully and truthfully conform to the facts and rules of the mock trial competition? If so, say I do. I do. Thank you. I do. Uh, witnesses, um, please raise your right hands. Do you promise that the testimony you're about to give will faithfully and truthfully conform to your witness statements that you will not add material facts or opinions which are not contained in the case problem and that you will follow the rules and procedures of the mock trial competition? If so, say I do. I do. All right, thank you. And any gallery members, um, if there are any, um, including teacher and attorney coaches, family members and friends, please raise your right hands. Do you promise to represent yourselves as positive role models and to behave in a manner that exemplifies ethical and professional sportsmanship during and after this mock trial round? If so, say I do. I don't know if we have any of those folks on the call, but finally, scoring panelists, if you could raise your right hands, and that includes me, do you promise to adjudicate the mock trial competition as fairly and objectively as possible in accordance with the facts, procedures, and rules of the mock trial competition? I do. I do. All right. Thank you, everyone. Now, I am told that for bandwidth purposes, it is best if we turn off our cameras unless you are the examining attorney, the witness, or the cross-examining attorney. Or, or if you're the attorney presenting opening or closing. So um, I'm gonna turn my monitor off um, and then I'll unmute myself to rule on objections, all right? Um, is the plaintiff prepared to give an opening statement? The plaintiff is, Your Honor. Um, after a few preliminary matters, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped the gun. Yeah, let's, let's two preliminary housekeeping matters from the plaintiff first. So the plaintiff only has two, Your Honor. Just to confirm that once exhibits are shared on the screen, they are hidden from the jury until Your Honor has published them into evidence. And if the situation arises, the defense would like to request the ability to confer with co-counsel via Zoom chat. No further preliminary matters, Your Honor. Any objection to either of those requests from the defense? No objections, Your Honor. Okay, that's granted. Um, any housekeeping or preliminary matters from the defense in addition to those things? Yes, Your Honor. We have one that is uh, that during objections and if there's any sort of technological issues that time has stopped. Any objection to that, um, counsel for the plaintiff? No, Your Honor. Okay, that's granted. All right, I think we are ready for opening statements. Um, and counsel, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, opposing counsel and members of the jury, my name is Faith Widmigler, representing the plaintiff in this case, along with my associates. My client, Dakota Weirs, was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma due to the negligence of lush fertilizers. Mr. Dakota Weir's goal is to recover the non-economic damages from the defendant caused by the fertilizer and to bring forth a negligence claim. This is a civil case and plaintiff Dakota Weir's must prove his case by a preponderance of the evidence. The facts of this case are straightforward. The evidence will go to show that negligence negates safety, that profit was put over people. We will call three witnesses, Dakota Weir's, Carson Durst, head of the research and development team at Terror Greenery, as well as former intern of Lush's current CEO, and Dr. Casey Rogers, a doctor of agriculture and entomology and current professor of horticulture and entomology from the University of California, Berkeley. First, Mr. Weirs will tell us about the constricting bounds of living with non-Hodgkin lymphoma, the horrors caused by a company's inability to protect consumers. Then Mr. Durst will tell us about his experiences with the dismissive 
greedy, solely profit-minded Blake Doncourt and the way she runs Lush Fertilizer behind the scenes, including the lack of care, attention to detail, and consumer safety precautions taken. Finally, Dr. Casey Rogers will explain the science of Drufo and the findings of a study he conducted on Drufo's carcinogenic impacts on humans, especially with regard to higher rates of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, the disease Mr. Weir's battles daily. The defense will then also call three witnesses, Blake Doncourt, the CEO of Lush Fertilizers, Skylar Weirs, Dakota's very own twin, and Dr. Devin Williams, the head of the toxicology and research team at Lush. Blake Doncourt will tell you how he puts profits over people by not baking his fertilizer despite recommendations and by not putting a warning of cancer risk on the product. Skylar Weirs will then tell you about his questionable motives for testifying as his father's money now goes towards Dakota's medical bills and he has to work two jobs due to this reallocation in addition to his own lack of secondary education. Finally, Dr. Devin Williams will tell you about the test he expects to show Drufo's safety and environmental benefits. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is a cancer that derails the life of its victims. Dakota Weir's life has been jeopardized due to the actions or inactions made by a greedy company by the name of Lush Fertilizer. By not taking critical precautions against the dangers of the chemical Drufo, they failed to protect him and failed to uphold the safety of workers. They prioritized profit over people. This case presents pressing issues that must be addressed. For these reasons, after you have heard all the evidence at the end of this trial, we will ask you to return a verdict in favor of Dakota Weirs. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Does counsel for the defense wish to make opening statement at this time? Yes, your honor. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Kaiser. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. Understood, your honor. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the case presented today is like a house. They need a concrete base to originate from. However, the plaintiff's foundation is filled with holes and cracks. You may ask why this is the case. This is because the plaintiff has a duty to provide a preponderance of evidence to prove that their side is correct and not so far-fetched. The plaintiff theorizes that Dakota is suffering from the horrific form of cancer as a result of non-genetic reasons. No doubt, there are plenty of causes for lymphoma. And to determine a cause, the plaintiff looks at their nearly identical sibling, Skylar Weirs. The only difference is that Dakota worked in landscaping and the sibling did not. This is true. There's no dispute over it. However, the plaintiff claims that one specific chemical from one specific product out of a large number of landscaping products that Dakota worked with is the cause for such a, cause, for such a horrific form of cancer, Drufo. On the same token, the defense also has to prove our site's correctness by a preponderance of the evidence. And the defense is more than adequately suited to do this. Today, the jury will be introduced to three witnesses from the defense's side. To start off with, there is Blake Donkert, the CEO of Lush Fertilizer. You'll hear that, Lake has, that Blake has built the company of Lush Fertilizer from the ground up and strives to make the world a better place. You'll hear how Blake Donkert, you'll hear Blake Donkert talk about their company, Lush Fertilizer, and how they took enough precautions to make their products safe for the people and the environment, how their former employer, employee, Carson Durst, is not the most trustworthy individual, and how Blake sympathizes with Dakota and, and is wishing them a safe and speedy recovery, but all while knowing that Lush did not cause this horrific form of cancer and that Dakota did not protect himself. Next, there's Skylar Weirs, an investigative journalist who works for the Rationalist magazine. Skylar will tell you how Drufo is an effective product that's not only good for the environment, but how, how Lush Fertilizer themselves is an ethical, ethical company. They'll also point out how a company should not allow a teenager to work unprotected with other chemicals that might be harmful, unlike Lush Fertilizer. Finally, there's Dr. Devin Williams, the head of research and development at the labs of Lush Fertilizer, who is quite familiar with Drufo. Williams will explain how Drufo works, 
the flaws with the plaintiff's study that blames Jufo, and why it's exceedingly unlikely that Dakota's cancer is caused by Jufo. Through a combination of these three testimonies, it will be shown that not only is Jufo safe, but Lush Fertilizer took the necessary precautions to ensure its safety. Furthermore, it will be revealed how the plaintiff's case has a multitude of holes in their foundation. These holes contain everything from a witness whose only goal is to get revenge on Lush Fertilizer to a study that not only compares apples to oranges, but will not even be present in this courtroom today. It should be kept in mind that the plaintiff will attempt to speak of how Lush did not take the necessary precautions to protect the consumer. This is untrue, yet if it were true, it would be bad for the plaintiff's case. This is because Dakota speaks of how they did not wear any type of protective equipment, despite being warned to do so from the, package, from the product packaging and the company they worked for, Haven Landscaping. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You are all that can possibly stop a safe and effective fertilizer that is beneficial for the greater good from being eradicated and replaced by a less effective equivalent. To do so, that you'll need to find that Lush was not guilty of negligence and they did not cause Dakota's cancer. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. Um... Does the plaintiff wish to call its first witness? Your Honor, I would like to call Dakota Weirs to the stand. All right, Mr. Weirs, you've already been sworn in. So um, Mr. Clayman, go ahead with direct whenever you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. First, I wanna say thank you for joining us today. Of course. Can you state your name and spell your last for the record? Yes, my name is Dakota Weirs, W-E-I-R-S. And how old are you? I'm 20 years old. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. I'm a student who has always worked extremely hard in everything that I do. I put in the work to excel with grades, was president of the student government, and involved in NHS. I volunteer at the homeless shelter by washing dishes, serving meals, and just helping the less fortunate but now I can barely even help myself around my own house. I also used to play the piano very competitively and was going to, get, to go to college for it, but now I can't. And what is your connection to the piano? Well, ever since, excuse me. Well, ever since I was little, I absolutely loved the piano. I remember before I even really understood what it was, I used to build forts and play with my toys underneath them. Then as I grew, I would constantly play with the foot pedals until I could finally reach the keys. I would just bang on them all day. I even started playing little ditties I made up and my grandfather used to play it for me as well. He used to let me sit on his lap while he played and show me how the pedals work. He sadly passed away when I was only seven and ever since then, just being at the piano would make me feel as he was right there with me. So you've been playing piano ever since you could basically walk? Honestly, since I could crawl. I just absolutely love it. And have felt an extreme connection with it since day one. Objection parents relevant. Have... What's the basis of the objection? Relevance. Response to relevance. Your honor, I am explaining some of the damages that have come from uh, Dakota's uh, illness. Overruled. Let me repeat the question for you. You've been playing piano since you could basically walk. Again, since I could crawl, I love it and have felt an extreme connection with it. My parents had me start lessons after my grandfather passed. They knew how close you were, so they thought it would help. I mean, they were definitely right. Ever since then, I studied, mu I studied music theory in my pastime, and I would play whenever I could find time in between extracurriculars and clubs. I drew a mini keyboard in my notebook so I could practice during bus rides or long drives. And what opportunities have come from you playing the piano? Many. Some awards and recitals and people would come from all over to hear me play. Julia, Juilliard offered me a full ride scholarship, which I had to turn down. I can't even sit down to play the piano anymore. The bench causes me bruises. My fatigue makes it so even the shortest concerto is impossible to play. Piano was my life. Yet the worst part about it is that I lost, is when my grandfather died, I connected to him with the piano. I feel like I lost him all over again. 
with my inability to play. And what do you think caused the sickness that has brought you so much loss? Lush fertilizer. They are the ones that made me not only lose my life and my future, but also made me lose my grandfather twice. I have proof too. When I was 14, I started working at Haven Landscaping. I wasn't old enough to handle the, all the big machinery, so my main job was seeding and, of course, fertilizing. I love to be outdoors and use my hands, and so I thought it would be a perfect fit for me. Of course, if I had known what would come of it, I never would have done it. I started to feel chest pains, chills, fatigue. My lymph nodes started to swell, and even though I also lost a ton of weight extremely fast, my stomach would swell to twice its normal size. I went to loads and loads of doctor's appointments, and man, those bills add up quickly. Then I was finally diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And why do you think it was this job that caused your illness? Non-Hodgkin lymphoma is not a genetic disease. It is purely caused by your environment. I have a twin sister who participated in almost the same exact activities as I, all except for my job. So if I got it, then she should have got it too. But they did it. And basically the only thing that differed in our environment- speculation. Response to speculation. Um, I'll continue. I'll move on. All right. That'll be sustained. Yeah. You mentioned your twin. Can you tell me about them? My twin is a freelance writer, always writing for the right price. They're in major debt from gambling. And I think the only reason they're going against me and their own family is because they got hostile towards us after my parents had to pay so much for my medical bills. They need the money and will write anything for some. I still love them to death, but please, they aren't on their side because it's right. They want to get back at me and my parents. Objection, speculation. Sustained. We'll strike the last response. Let's return to Lush. What led you to this connection between your illness and Lush fertilizer? During my, one of my many bouts of depression, since my life has ended, I was watching the news and saw a story come up about Drufo it's, and its connection to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and how Lush fertilizer included it. Like I said, I worked as a fertilizer for Haven and knew that I had been using Lush fertilizer. I called my boss to warn him, warn him about Lush fertilizer and he sent me a picture of the label. Wouldn't you know? Drew foam. I also noticed that there were none, zero warnings on the label. Other fertilizers have warnings such as don't use indoors, but Lush, none. I know for a fact that I use Lush indoors as, a, as I was instructed to do so, and why shouldn't I have? Objection it doesn't not to. Sustain. Um, counsel, if you could break this testimony up with a few more questions, that'd be great. Of course, Your Honor. You mentioned Drew foam. Can you explain this a little more? Yes, my dad speaks fluent French. And as I stated, started researching Drufo and Lush fertilizer when we found Drufo is bound all, excuse me, is banned all over the world, including France. When he read the French label, it was exactly the same except for one big thing. Take a guess, no Drufo. I know that Lush fertilizer knew it caused health issues and they didn't do anything about it, at least not here. In other places maybe, but here, nothing. They did nothing. Clearly, they pri prioritize profits over people. Your Honor. Okay. Uh, no further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Yep, whenever you're ready. Thank you. So, Dakota, you mentioned working at Haven's Landscaping, correct? That is correct. I started when I was 14. Yes. And you worked with the landscaping materials frequently, right? Yep. I did seeding and fertilizers. Your boss told you to always wear a mask while working with the chemicals, correct? That is correct. Uh, when we were seeding and stuff. And you also forego most of those required protections, correct? Uh, it was hot out and he wasn't out there with us. It was, I mean, I didn't know what to do with all the heat. I couldn't withstand it. So this includes the long sleeves that you were required to wear? Yes, but if I knew it caused non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, I would have done things differently. So did the other employees do the same? No, everyone did as I did. I was just trying to follow the status quo, fit in. I was one of the youngest. I was just trying to fit in and do what the others did. 
And did any of the other employees get non-Hodgkin's lymphoma? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Did you use any masks while using the fertilizer? No. Again, like I said, it was so hot. I couldn't withstand the heat. Did you wash your protective equipment after use of the fertilizer? Excuse me, one more. Can you repeat the question? Did you wash your protective equipment after the use of fertilizer? Uh, no. Did the landscaping company advise as such? No, I got no advisement. I just did what my boss said. So then if you got non-Hopkins lymphoma as your company did not require you to, or did not enforce the use of your protective gear, then why not sue the landscaping company itself rather than the, the fertilizer? Because I used Lush Fertilized Project, which, which has Drufo in it. I know it has a leak uh, link to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And there was no warning on the label. There was only precautions, but there was no warning of what the product could do. Did you use any other fertilizers similarly in an unprotective state? Yes, but none that had Drufo. Moving on, you were led to believe that the fertilizer was responsible because Skylar did not get cancer? Yes, again, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is a uh, non-genetic disease. It was caused by environment. Our environment's only altered in the fact that I used uh, lush fertilizer and worked at Havens, and she did not. And so Skylar did not work with the fertilizer, as you said, right? That's correct. And this, you this leads you to believe that the fertilizer itself caused the cancer rather than any other genetic issues? Or chemical right. issues. Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma is a non-genetic disease. So yes, I do feel like it was environmentally sustained. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Weirs. You can step down. Further witnesses for the plaintiff. Good afternoon, Your Honor. May you... Uh, we call Carson Durst to the stand. All right, Ms. Durst, you are already sworn. So counsel, whenever you're ready, go ahead with direct. Good afternoon, Carson Durst. May you please state your name and spell your last for the record? Carson Durst, D-U-R-S-T. Where are you currently employed? Harris Gregory. What is your relationship to the Don Courts? 20 years ago, Blake and the whole Don Courts. Um, objection, Your Honor. Lack of foundation. Uh, overruled, but I will say, um, Ms. Durst, you are a little bit hard to hear. If you could speak up a little, that would be great. Yes. Our, would you like me to repeat the question? Yes. What is your relationship to the Don Courts? 20 years ago, Blake and the whole Don Court family were like family to me. I was best friends with Charles Don Court. We played soccer together on the local traveling team and we were inseparable. There were Sunday night dinners at the Don Courts and summer trips to the lake house. What are your credentials? I am head of the research and development team at Terrace Greenery, overseeing Terrace Greenery development line of its fertilizers and lawn enhancement What was your position at Lush Fertilizer? After three months at Lush Fertilizer, I was promoted to a full-time position at, as a product development engineer. When did you start working at Lush Fertilizer? In June 2003, I was originally an intern and moved through the ranks fast. And how would you describe your promotional Lush Fertilizer? I earned it fair and square. Why the defensiveness? Some believe that my promotion was just because of my relationship with the Don Courts, but I assure you that the reason I passed the more experienced engineers was because I was performing at a higher level. What was your task during the Drufo research? I was tasked with researching one of the chemical compounds that comprised Drufo. How would you describe the research process to discover if Drupal was potentially carcinogenic? It was influenced by the higher-ups for sure. Why do you say that? 
there was certainly pressure from management for the experimental study. Um, objection, Your Honor, speculation. Response to speculation. Your Honor, Carson Durst is just stating their opinions, but it's an educated opinion since they were a part of the study themselves and they are just saying how they interpreted it. Okay, I'm gonna- Can I respond briefly? Actually, oh, I'm just sorry. gonna sustain on lack of foundation. Um, counsel, if you can ask a few more questions and establish how this witness knows management's attitude, then I think you can get there that way. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go forward and just skip that question. All right. Would you say the research studies and their interpretations are unique to the situation? I mean, in business, it is commonly understood that studies should support it to avoid certainties and to give- um, Objection, Your Honor. Um, lack of foundation. What study are we talking about? We're talking about the study that drew, that was done by Blush Fertilizer themselves when examining Drufo, it, it was carcinogenic. Okay, I'll, I'll sustain the objection on lack of foundation. I think, Council, if you just ask those couple questions about what study we're talking about, that'll take care of it. And Ms. Durst, there, there's a bit of an echo. Um, I'm assuming y'all are in close proximity. Um, yes. I, I can still understand you, but if, uh, if it gets to the point where I can't, I, I will speak up. All right. Ms. Durst, what was the process to um, determine if, if Drufo's was carcinogenic or not? Um, well, we all researched and in December of 2003, we, we have included our analysis and very lean robots gathered us in the conference room to discuss our findings when scientists expressed concerns that not only may Drufo contain a carcinogen, but that her analysis found that it was perhaps linked to non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And what, how did the higher-ups receive this study? They received it from us. And how would you describe the research process in this study? Um, the research process, well, we all did our own research and we all concluded the study together. And my boss and the higher-ups did not take it seriously. And where was non-Hodgkin lymphoma mentioned in this report? Nowhere specifically. What measures did Lush Fertilizer take in light of the information that it could be potentially carcinogenic? Um, the report went on to recommend baking Drufo as part of the process to eliminate the possibility that it could be considered carcinogenic. And what are your thoughts on this report since you participated in the research? The study was incredibly misleading. Misleading how? It was obvious to me that some data was left out of the report to protect the company. Why were they all so desperate to protect Drufa? As far as Lush Fertilizer was concerned- Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. Response to hearsay. Um, Give me, can I have one moment to confirm with co-counsel? Sure. Thank you. This is to prove a, a 
particular matter, not a material matter. And this is important to the case. And it's something that's being interpreted by own, a witness that is qualified to interpret it. I think the Your question was, <clears throat> no, I'm gonna rule. I think the question was, um, you know, why, why was management um, trying to uh, protect uh, this secret. So I, I'm going to overrule the hearsay objection. You can go ahead, counsel. And why were they so desperate to protect lush fertilizer? Well, like I said, as far as lush fertilizer was concerned, Drufo was the goose that laid the golden egg. Um, objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Response to speculation? This is said in the statement and and several other witnesses have confirmed that Drufo was a very important and very special product. So this is not speculation. I'm going to sustain, I, I think you can ask the witness <clears throat> how it appeared to her that management, um, how management's attitude appeared to her based on her observations. Um, but I think to ask her to say how management felt does call for speculation. So I'll sustain that objection. All right, I'm just going to move on. What was this time for you like at Lush Fertilizer? While this was an issue since I started, it seemed as though all of a sudden there was a lot more pushback from some of the senior members of the team for my role in the choice assignments. My annual performance reviews suddenly started to reflect those sentiments. The quality of my work was criticized and I was accused of just skating along and not pulling my weight. Some went so far to say that I thought I was untouchable because of my relationship with Charlie and the Doncourt family. And how would you respond to these claims? I worked hard. They were unwarranted. I do not have a vendetta against this company. The only problem I have with Lush Fertilizer is that they prioritize profit over their customer safety and our safety. How did your time at Lush Fertilizer come to an end? Well, the executive team at Lush Fertilizer confronted me about the mounting complaints about my job performance from my coworkers and staff. They made me sign a performance improve improvement plan, which meant I was in pro pro prohibitionary status with the company. I became marginalized at work and relegated to assignments no one wanted. What did Blake Doncourt, the man who was practically a second father to you, do when he, you brought forth these complaints? Blake refused to intervene. And how would you describe this reaction to you? Unexpected. What was Blake's life like during this time? He was going through a messy divorce. And so I resolved- Objection, Your Honor. Uh, relevant. So he going to... <laughs> right. Uh, what was Blake's financial situation like during this time? It wasn't great. And when did Objection, you Your Honor. Relevant again. There is foundation for the plaintiff because uh, to question the CEO's integrity because he's so desperate to protect his company. Um, Chelsea, I'll sustain on lack of foundation. Um, if you can ask the witness a few more questions to establish how she knows anything about that other person's financial situation, I think you can get there. All right. Um, sure, just take a close break. You know, I'm just going to move on because we're running out of time. Uh, when did your time at Lush Fertilizer come to an end? Um, well, in December of 2006, but by that point, I had already been hired by Terrace. And what happened then? A legal battle ensued. Lush tried to get a court order in joining me from working at Terrace because they feared even disclosures of trade secrets given the overlap of products produced by both companies. What did you sign when you first started at Lush Fertilizer? A confidentiality agreement, though I do not remember at the time, I do know that the confidentiality agreement stated that I could not disclose Lush Fertilizer's trade secrets. And what happened ultimately? A settlement was reached where Tara and I agreed that I would not start my employment for there for a period of six months. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, counsel. Cross-examination? Yes, please, Your Honor. May I begin? Whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, Ms. Durst. Do you know Ms. Blake Doncourt? Can you please repeat the question? Um, do you know Ms. Blake Doncourt? 
Yes. And Miss Doncorn and her family were like the family that you never had. Yes, that is correct. I spent a lot of time with them 20 years ago and Charlie was my best friend. And so you started working at Miss Doncord's company, Lush Fertilizer, right out of college. Yes, right after me and Charlie had both graduated from Arizona State University. And this was the only job you were able to find after college, correct? Yes, that is I was having a hard time finding a job right out of college. And you rose through the ranks with Lush Fertilizer so quickly because of your relationship with the Doncord family, right? Projection speculation. Overruled. Would you like me to repeat the question? Yes. So you rose through your ranks at Lush Fertilizer so quickly because of your relationship with the Doncord family. No, right? that I worked really hard to get my promotion and I feel like it was not because of my relationship. It was because of my work ethic and how I was performing at my job. Okay. But like you previously stated, you're still close enough with them to be family. Yes, I would say that, but my professional life and my personal life is different and it's separated. Um, so you worked with the research and development division of Lush Fertilizer? Yes, that is correct. And your biggest assignment in the job was helping to develop Drufo? Yes, that is correct. And find that comes So from while researching Drufo, you found one English study that showed it was a possible carcinogen for rats? Yes, that is correct. So this carcinogen was only a possibility, not a sure thing? Um, it, yes, it could be, but there was a lot of evidence and a lot of research that went into this. And in, um, when I found this study- And we're still talking about the English study, right? Yes, we are talking about the English study. Okay. And so with this English study, it tested rats, not humans or primates or anything closely related to humans? Um, we did not find we did not find any evidence about that. But um, the following September, in an, in an in-house study, Drufo, we found out that Drufo could be carcinogenic in humans. Okay, so um, so with this or going off of the Lush study and the English study, no other study unearthed adverse effects in humans, though. No. And so Lush fertilizer, like you just said, did a study on if. Um, Drufo was a carcinogen in humans? Yes, an in-house study the following September after the England study. And so with that study, there wasn't any set in stone evidence that linked Drufo to carcinogens? Yes, there was. We did find that it could be carcinogenic in rats and following September, possibly in humans. And you're saying that's set in stone evidence? I mean, we did the study, we did our research, so... Um, Your Honor, could you give me one second? Sure. Um, Co-counsel, could you please pull up um, Ms. Carsinger's um, witness statement? and screen share it as well, so um, the courtroom couldn't see it. Okay, um, just one more second, please, while I find the exact line. Um, so, um, Ms. Doncourt, or co-counsel, could you go to line 47 of the statement? And Ms. Durst, could you read line 47 to 50 of the statement? Or, sorry, that's the wrong line, my bad. Um, sorry, Your Honor, I'm just making sure I have the right line for the witness to read. No problem, take your time. Um, okay, could you move to line 66, co-counsel? Uh, Ms. Durst, could you read line 66 starting at further and go to line 68 where it says cancer? Yes. Further analysis is required before we are able to make any conclusions regarding the likelihood of the chemical compound at issue causing any long-term health effects, including cancer. 
Would you like me to continue? Okay. No, that's all. Thank you. And you could take down the document co-counsel. So after reading that, Mr. Ist, would you say that um, it was set, there was any set in stone evidence that linked roof of the carcinogens or um, that it was only a possibility? Like I said before, we did our research. We found out in a few studies that there is a possibility and that it was linked and that, yeah. I mean, so just clarifying, you said possibility. Research. You said possibility, just clarifying. Um, yes yeah. or no? Yeah. Okay. We did multiple studies and we worked hard to find it. Um, multiple studies being just the one in-house study, right? No, we did. Well, we found the study in England and then they were working on developing Drufo and then we did an in-house study to see if it was carcinogenic in humans. Okay, so just the one in-house study done by Lush? Yes. Okay. So with this study, did he receive a copy of the study report and analysis? Can you repeat the question? Um, did you receive a copy of the study report and analysis from the study? Yes. And the study report said that the product is safe enough for what the law requires? Um, I believe so. And it's also within the federal standards for safety? I'm not completely sure. Um, would you like me to refresh your recollection on that? No. No? So you're saying that it is or isn't within federal standards for safety? Well, there is a possibility, but we did find evidence that there was carcinogenic in rats and it could be carcinogenic in humans. Okay, just to clarify real quick, Lush Fertilizer did not do the English study, did they? That was just reviewed by you? Yes, it was. Okay. So going back to the Lush study, it was found to be within federal standards for safety, right? But like I said earlier, um, we could- Objection asked and answered. Um, Your Honor, if I may respond briefly, the witness never um, answered the question in a true manner. Yeah, I, I agree it's been, it's been asked, but I'm not sure it's been answered, so overruled. So, Mr. Ist, one last time, is it within federal standards for safety? Yes or no? No. Yes. Um, yes? Okay. So, uh, Mr. Ist, with this study, you didn't have access to all of the data that was analyzed by research and development? I, was, I did not have access to all of it, no. Yet you're still certain that data was left out in Lush's final report? Well, I was there with the business meeting and I heard what got brought up and I believe that they tried to sugarcoat the whole thing to make their company look better. So that's a yes? Yes. Um, so after the study, there was a decline in your quality of work, right? I, I believe that I was still working hard, but my colleagues were giving reports. Is, is this a yes or a no? No. No? There was no decline in your quality of work, like you just said in your direct statement or direct examination? Can you repeat the question? There was no decline in your quality of work like you just stated in the direct examination. Yes. Or like you stated in your witness statement. And could you please stick to yes or no answers um, for the sake of time? Our side is going to be our best to do that for you. So we would ask that we receive the same courtesy. Um, so like I said, I do not believe that there was decline in the quality of my work because my colleagues were doing these reports and then I put on a probationary status, which meant that I could not do much. And when I tried to bring it to Blake, he simply refused to intervene. And that is what happened. Okay. And then you got fired by Lush Fertilizer, right? Yes, I did. And you now work with Terra Greenery's research and development team? Yes. And you're working on developing a product for Terra that you believe outperforms Lush Fertilizer's product? Well, we are doing work, yes. And the only difference between this product and Lush's is the lack of Drufo and Terra's product? Yes, it is much more safer. Okay. Are you aware of your confidentiality agreement with Lush Fertilizer? 
Yes, question relevance. What's the relevance, Council? Um, Your Honor, this directly relates to Carson Durst's credibility as a witness and establishing if Carson Durst has any bias or has lied previously. Well, four and it's also setting foundation up for the next question. Well, let's, uh, let's be in a constructive sidebar for a second. And um, Mr. Rowe, help, help me understand how the witness's knowledge of her non-computer non-disclosure or violating it um, bears on her credibility. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but help me understand that. Um, Your Honor, I can't say that without <laughs> beginning the next question. So would you allow me um, to have the witness answer okay. the question and me state the next question and then we could rule on it after? Okay. Now this is an offer of proof situation where you just tell me what you think the witness is gonna say so that we can talk about it. Okay, so the witness, so this document outlines um, like the compete agreement and how um, like no work person working for Lush can disclose trade secrets for Lush. And it was signed um, by the witness, but then they still went to Tara's Greenery while working for Lush Fertilizer, breaking the agreement. So it goes towards their credibility there. Okay, let me go back to Ms. Weiss for a final reply and then I'll rule on the relevance objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Rule 403 is a prohibits questions containing unfair prejudices and this clearly contains an unfair prejudice against the relevance and is trying to hurt Mr. image. All right. I'm going to sustain the relevance objection at this point. If you can lay further foundation for um, you know why this impacts on her credibility, um, you might be able to get there. But at this point I'll sustain okay. the objection. So, Mr. St um, with this non-compete agreement, you signed it? Yes, I did, but we, we actually resolved this in a legal dispute. Um, Mr. St I just asked if you signed it, not if you resolved it in a legal I, dispute. Just, I just, I was... Um, yeah, I just asked if you signed it, not anything about a legal dispute. Yes, I did sign it, and we already resolved this, and I waited for six months to start working at Terrace Greenery. Okay. So, but you still reached out to Tara's Greenery while at the company of Lush Fertilizer? Yes, that is true because my colleagues were not supporting me and I did not see myself having a future at Lush Fertilizer. So I started looking for another job. And you did this even though the non-compete agreement states that you could not, and I quote, disclose Lush's trade secrets or work for another company that would benefit of from knowing of trade secrets and you applying to the company and being accepted into the company um, clearly outlines that you worked for that company that would benefit. Um, right? Can you so you went to Tara's Greenery. Yes. That's and but the non-compete agreement says that you can't work for another company while that would benefit um, from knowing of tra said trade secrets. And this is before the legal dispute. Not even talking about that here. Just the fact that you could not um, work for another company that would benefit, and yet you still applied to and were hired by Terra's. Yes, but at this time, um, I was not feeling supported at my company, and I was looking for another job. And then, like I said, we resolved this, and I did take six months and sign this agreement saying that I would not disclose any trade secrets. Okay, no further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Weiss. Thank you, Ms. Durst. Um, further witnesses for the plaintiff. Um, Ms. Winbigler, I believe you are muted. Sorry, Your Honor. No problem. The plaintiff calls Dr. Casey Rogers to the stand. All right, Dr. Rogers, you've already been sworn in. So Ms. Winbigler, go ahead with direct whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, Dr. Rogers. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. Dr. Casey Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S. What do you do for a living? I'm currently a professor at the University of Berkeley, California in the Department of Horticulture and Entomology. What experience do you have in this field? Um, well, I have a bachelor's degree of science in agriculture and chemistry from Colorado State University. I've received my PhD from UC Berkeley in agriculture and entomology. 
Uh, I've also worked as a research analyst for a large multinational company, and I've published numerous articles um, on the harmful effects of prolonged exposure to many chemicals, such as JUFO. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. Let the record reflect that opposing counsel has previously been provided with a copy of Exhibit 6 and Exhibit 7. Record will so reflect. Your Honor, permission to share the screen so the witness may view a copy of Exhibit 6 and Exhibit 7. You may. One moment, Your Honor. Dr. Rogers, without going into its contents, can you identify Exhibit 6 and Exhibit 7? Uh, yes, this is my curriculum vitae and my research publications. Thank you. Are these copies true? Yes, they are true and correct copies. Thank you, Dr. Rogers. And permission to stop sharing screen. Sorry, counsel, I couldn't find my unmute. All right, that's, that's fine. And you all can feel free to take control of the screen anytime you like. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the plaintiff offers Exhibit 6 and Exhibit 7 into evidence. Any objection to 6 and 7? Yes, Your Honor, objection uh, based on lack of foundation. Response to lack of foundation. Ms. Winbigler? Response, Your Honor? Yes. I am laying the foundation for Dr. Casey Rogers' credibility in the field of horticulture and etymology, which is very important to the decision in this case regarding the issues of TRUFO and agriculture. I think there's proper foundation for these exhibits. And since the objection is to lack of foundation, I will overrule that objection and admit the exhibits. Thank you, Your Honor. Permission to publish virtually, Your Honor. You may. Your Honor, at this point, based on Dr. Casey Rogers' extensive experience and education, the plaintiff would like to offer up Dr. Casey Rogers as an expert in the field of agriculture, chemistry, and entomology. Any objection or voir dire from uh, the defense? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the defense requests to voir dire this witness. Okay, go ahead. All right. So, Dr. Rogers, have you testified as an expert witness before? Oh, no, this will be my first time. Have you given technical advice to any companies before? Uh, yes, I have, like I've stated um, before. I've worked with um, a large multinational uh, chemical company uh, as a name, research analyst. Could you name that company? Uh, I don't know right now, but I can tell you it's a multinational company. Okay. Have you given technical advice to any advisory boards? Um, not that I know of. Have you given technical advice to any regulatory agencies? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, all right. Do you have any medical experience? Um, like I said, referring to medical experience, no, but I, I do have- Objection a relevance. Uh, overruled. Uh, Dr. Rogers, would you like me to repeat the question? Oh, uh, yes, please. Uh, do you have any medical experience? Uh, I do not, but I have received my PhD from UC, uh, UC Berkeley in agriculture and entomology, and I have my bachelor's degree of science in agriculture and chemistry from CSU, so I am qualified to talk about this. All right. Have you worked at any hospitals before? Uh, no, not that I know of. All right. How long have you been studying the effects of chemicals on the human body for? Um, I can tell you it's been a long time. Uh, I, I've and further pursued my passion of science with my bachelor's and PhDs. I've worked with numerous articles about the harmful effects of exposure and chemicals to um, like Drufo. Uh, how many years? Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you that right now. It would be a rough estimate. All right. Uh, how long have you been studying the effects of Drufo for? 
Um, uh, well, after when Drufo first came on the market after its development in 2003, I noticed that its arrival was very rushed and lacked sufficient testing. So driven by these concerns, I constructed a study on the adverse health effects of long-term exposure to Drufo specifically. Um, okay. Uh, Your Honor, the defense objects to this witness being qualified as an expert in toxicology and entomology. The witness's work experience is not only vague, but also lacking. All right, I am going to overrule the objection and will admit Dr. Rogers as an expert in uh, the fields uh, that, that he referenced a moment ago. Your Honor, we would like to offer up Dr. Casey Rogers as an expert in agriculture, chemistry, and entomology. Those fields, yes. The doctor will be so qualified. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Moving on, doctor, how are you connected to this case? I've conducted a study on the possible health effects of long-term exposure to Drufo. And could you clarify what exactly is Drufo? Uh, in short, Luscious fertil fer 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 Fertilizers Research and Development Team patented this chemical and it became a bonding agent for all of Luscious products. Could you briefly explain what led you to conduct a study on the effects of Drufo? Yes, like I stated in my voir dire, um, when Drufo first came on the market after its development in 2003, there was very, it was evident. It was evident that it was very rushed and it lacked sufficient testing. So that's why I started conducting studies on the long-term health exposure uh, effects on exposure to Drufo. And how did you conduct the study? So in short, I monitored a, I monitored a control group of people who had never been exposed to Drufo, a, a group of people who used Drufo-containing products on occasion, and a group of people who were exposed to day daily to Drufo over a period of years following their exposure. Uh, the health conditions of the groups exposed to Drufo were compared to the control group, specifically with regard to the frequency of which people of each group contracted non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Dr. Rogers, could you summarize briefly, what is non-Hodgkin lymphoma? Uh, briefly, non-Hodgkin lymphoma is a specific type of cancer which affects white blood cells, which are called lymphocytes. What did you find through your study? So among those exposed to Drufo compared to the control group, there was an increase in serious health conditions and di diagnoses, specifically cancer and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. The group with prolonged exposure to Drufo was 10 times more likely to be diagnosed with cancer than those with none, and five times more likely to be diagnosed with cancer than those with occasional exposure. What are the implications of these findings? Long-term ex exposure to Drufo has cancerous impacts. In addition, 28% of people who are diagnosed with this illness do not survive. And the use of Drufo has contributed to that percentage of people. What did you determine as the cause of Dakota Weir's non-Hodgkin lymphoma? I've determined that there is a high medical probability that Weir's non-Hodgkin lymphoma was caused by prolonged exposure to Drufo. How did you reach this conclusion? Through Weir's employment records, um, and his uh, medical records. What did you find through the examination of Weir's employment records? So with Weir's employment records, I have found that he has worked with a landscaping or for a landscaping company. Um, and because of this, he has worked with Drufo and has been in frequent contact with the chemical for about four years. What did you find through the examination of Weir's medical records? Um, through his medical records, I have found that Weir's has worked with products containing Drufo for a prolonged period of time. Uh, Weir's, is, Weir's level ex of exposure to um, was similar in nature for those in the study who had prolonged exposure to the chemical. Weir's medical records also show that he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Could you explain briefly the science behind non-Hodgkin lymphoma and exposure to Drufo? Uh, yes, so lymph-containing cells and foreign particles from Trufo enter the tissue and diffuse uh, through and into the space between Weir's skin and lung tissue. Uh, as those particles accumulate in lymph nodes, their concentration overwhelms the immune functions of lymphocyte cells, resulting in cancerous masses. How did these findings inform your conclusion? Through a view of his medical records and employment records, we can conclude that non-Hodgkin lymphoma was caused by prolonged exposure to Drufo. Why did you want to testify today? My findings prove that prolonged exposure to Drufo, a recurrent situation not exclusive to wires, leads to the, the development of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. I am hoping that this case will lead doors to class action lawsuits that will take action against inhumane, preventable causes of this disease. Do you have financial incentive, Dr. Rogers? Well, truthfully, yes. 
Uh, as I stated before, I am hoping that this case will lead to class action lawsuits against dangerous chemicals such as Drufo. Uh, however, I have devoted my entire education and career to the field of agriculture and entomology. Therefore, I'm extremely passionate and advocate and about advocacy in these fields. Uh, nothing in my statement has been biased in any way whatsoever, as I classified on the basis of fact and scientific findings. Thank you for your time, Dr. Ro Casey Rogers. No further questions. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Rogers, before I start, could you answer each of the questions as a yes or no? I will try my best, and I'll try to answer them with the full extent of my knowledge. All right. So you mentioned a study you did. You as you mentioned a study you did on Jufo comparing various workers who had and had not been exposed to the chemical. Is there an exhibit where we can see the study? Um, I'm sorry. Um, I can you repeat the question? I don't understand. It very much. So the study that you mentioned on Jufo comparing various workers who had and had not been exposed to the chemical. Is there an exhibit where we can see this study? Uh, I don't think so, but uh, like I stated, I'll right. summarize what I did in my Thank you, Mr. Um, Rogers. In my study. Oh, sorry. Thank you, doctor. Is it true that you compared farm laborers and casual gardeners in the study? Yes, I. we had three groups, a control group who has never been exposed to Drufo, a group who um, used Drufo-containing products on occasion, and a group who were exposed daily to Drufo, and that's how doctor. we compared those. Yes. Remember, keep it to a yes or no. Oh, yeah, I'll try my best. All right. Uh, and the farm laborers had been exposed to the chemical? Yes, daily. And the gardeners had not? Um, well, they've, they've used Jufo-containing products on occasion. Uh, were the farm laborers exposed to the chemical more than the gardeners? Uh, yes, because they would, oh, the farm- oh, Thank you much, doctor. Sorry, excuse me? Uh, thank you for the answer, doctor. Correct me if I'm wrong, Actually, but- my witness isn't being allowed to answer the question. Yeah, um, just for the purposes of our, you know, theoretical court reporter, let's make sure that the attorney waits for the witness to finish answering before asking the next question. And uh, doctor, if you could wait until the attorney has finished asking his question before you start your answer, that would be great. It's hard to transcribe both at once. Uh, doctor, would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, yes, please. Were the farm laborers exposed to the chemical more than the gardeners were? So like I've stated, um, these farm laborers were, uh, who were in the study contained, uh, were exposed daily to Drufa over a period of years following the uh, per exposure. And um, these gardeners, as you say, are a group of people who use Drufa containing products on occasion. And then like that, I also can monitor a control group who had never been exposed to Drufa. And my findings obviously um, clearly have a causation impact that Drufo and chemicals like Drufo cause non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Like I stated, um, long-term exposure to Drufo has cancerous impacts. And in addition, 28% of people who are diagnosed with this illness do not survive. Your and Honor, through my study- The witness is not answering the question. Is, is the objection to a non-responsive answer? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I'll sustain that objection. Is there a motion to strike the response? Yes, Your Honor. All right, I will strike the response. Go ahead and ask the next question. Correct me if I'm wrong, doctor, but don't farm laborers and casual gardeners have different jobs? Yes, they do. But with my uh, study, I, I, um, I, I, I uh, talked about how they were exposed daily and how um, farmers were exposed daily and how gardeners only worked on them with occasion. Moving on, has the study been peer reviewed? Uh, no, it has not. But um, peer review, uh, as the gold standard for scientific studies, has numerous flaws. There are many examples of scientists winning Nobel Prizes on, on scientific studies that were rejected by the peer review process. So I don't think that's very relevant. Has the study been replicated? Uh, no, it has not. Be, um, even, even though I am the first one to find this, that, that, does, that, that does not um, tear my credibility of the study. I think that's time for cross. Is there any redirect? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you very much, doctor. You can step down. Further witnesses for the plaintiff? No, Your Honor, the, right. the plaintiff rests. Okay, the plaintiff has rested and I don't believe we are to entertain any halftime motions. So does the defense wish to present a case? 
Um, yes, Your Honor. The defense would like to call Ms. Blake Doncourt to the stand for our first witness. All right, Ms. Doncourt, where are you? There you are. Um, may I begin? Yes, Ms. Doncourt, you've already been sworn, so counsel, go ahead with direct whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, Ms. Doncourt. Could you please state your name and spell the last for the record? Uh, yes, I'm Blake Doncourt, D-O-N-C-O-U-R-T-T. And what is your involvement in this case? I'm the CEO of Lush Fertilizer. And what is Lush Fertilizer? Lush Fertilizer is a fertilizer company and is actually one of the largest in the world. And how successful has the company been? Extremely successful. We have um, been very successful and um, are able to donate some of our profits to charities to decrease environmental harm and the global nitrogen footprint. And how successful have you personally been? I personally have won numerous awards and was nominated for the United Nations Champion of the Earth Award. Okay. And has your company had success with any major products? Uh, yes. Our largest product is Lush Fertilizer and is proudly used by governments, individuals, and businesses. Are you aware of why Dakota Weirs is bringing a negligence claim upon your company today? Uh, yes. Dakota Weirs believes that our product gave them cancer. And would you say that your product did? Uh, no. Our, our Lush was never Objection part of leading, cancer. Your Honor. Overall. Um, would you like me to restate the question? Uh, yes, please. Would you say that your product was a direct cause for the cancer? Uh, no, Lush was never yeah, part of the disease the pathology. The objection to, le to leading is overruled. I think oh, I yeah. caught the witness's answer, so go ahead Sorry, with the next Your question. Honor. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to move on from that because we got the witness answer. Um, Ms. Doncourt, are you directly aware of any dangers that are from the Lush fertilizer product? Uh, no, and if there was any, I would know about them. This product took years of research and development to identify a risk and nothing was ever found. And how extensive was your research? Like I said, it was extremely extensive. It took years of research and development um, to put out this product, trying to identify a risk. And were there any risks found by anyone else? Uh, no, neither uh, my toxicology department nor, did, nor the EPA uh, found anything that would require a warning label of toxicity. And outside of your company and the EPA, were there any other studies done? The only study I'm aware of is the one that Casey Rogers claimed to do, but it wasn't published until the trial came up. Okay. To move on to a separate topic, are you aware of a person named um, Carson Durst? Objection, yes. Connor, leading. I don't think asking if the witness is aware suggests whether or not she is. So I will overrule the objection to leading. So Ms. Durst, are, or Ms. Doncourt, my apologies. Are you aware of um, a person named Ms. Carson Durst? Yes, I am. Carson Durst used to work at my company, Lush Fertilizer. And what was their job at your company? Carson worked in the research and development team for Lush and was able to learn trade secrets and gain training from the company itself. And do you respect Carson's work for you and your company? As a matter of fact, I don't. Carson made many claims that I did not agree with and um, left to work for our biggest competitor. And what type of claims were made by Ms. Durst? Uh, Carson claims that our research and development reports were written to seem like it was like we weren't doing anything wrong, uh, which we never were. Uh, those reports all, were the ones that told me that there was no significant dangers at all with the product, especially linked to cancer. And in relation to these claims, could they have been brought up by Carson while at your company? Uh, yeah, it was Carson's job to um, identify any risks as he worked in the research and development department. And so while Mr. Sue was at your company, was there any agreement or something held? Uh, yes, the company held a non-disclosure agreement with Carson. And to my knowledge, it's been marked as Exhibit 5. And is this an official document? Uh, yes, this is a, it's the official document for Lush. Um, your Honor, permission to have co-counsel screen share Exhibit 5 to the witness? That's fine. Um, 
Um, what do you see in front of you right now? Uh, our non-compete agreement for Lush. And is this the document as you know it? Yes, it is. And is this document official? Yes, it is official for Lush Fertilizer. Has this document been changed or altered from when, from when you last seen it? Saw it? No, it has not. My apologies. Um, Co-counsel, could you move to the second page of the document? And could you zoom in on the signatures? Ms. Donkward, is that first signature yours? Yes, it is. And the second is Carson Durst's? Objection yes. of your side. Um, I'll rephrase the question. Um, is the second Carson Durst as you know it? Uh, yes, it is as I know it. Um, Your Honor, the defense moves for Exhibit 5 to be entered into evidence. Any objection to 5? No, Your Honor. All right. Without objection, 5 is admitted. Um, Co-counsel, could you move to the first page and zoom on on what Part 2, the non- um, disclosure covenant says. And Ms. Doncourt, are you able to read that? Yes, I am. Okay. Could you please do that for us? Uh, yes. The employee will not at any time or any manner, either directly or indirectly, divulge, disclose, reveal, or communicate any trade secret belonging to Lush to any third party, including but not limited to any competitor of Lush. Okay. You could take the document out. Now, co-counsel. Um, Ms. Doncourt, have you heard of the new Terra Greenery product that is being released? Uh, yes, it is very similar to Lush's product. And for no your knowledge, from your knowledge of both this agreement and the new Terra's product, Terra Greenery's product, would Ms. Durst be breaking the agreement? Uh, without a doubt. Action relevant. Uh, Response to relevance. Um, Your Honor, this is going directly toward the credibility of Ms. Durst, who was a former employee of Ms. Doncourt's company and worked under Ms. Doncourt, and it's outlining exactly everything that is from the agreement. May I respond, Your Honor? Briefly. According to Rule 403, this question contains unfair prejudice and should not be admitted. All right. And the, and I'm sorry, Mr. Rowe, remind me of the question. Um. From your knowledge of the agreement and the Terra Greenery product, would Carson be breaking the agreement? All right, I'm gonna overrule as to relevance. I think, I think this witness can answer that. I think it is relevant. Um, Ms. Doncourt, um, would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, yes. So from your knowledge of this agreement and the new Terra Greenery product, would Mr. Durst be breaking the agreement? Uh, yes, despite Carson's claims as acting as a whistleblower, he's just using Lush's training to profit Terra's. Okay. In this trial, are you aware of any other um, claims that are being brought against you by Dakota's attorneys? Uh, yes. Uh, Dakota's attorneys are accusing me of not properly treating our fertilizer by baking it. Lush does not need to bake our fertilizer because it's simply overkill. As I said before, there is no valid evidence that links Lush fertilizer to being a carcinogen or causing cancer. Okay. Do you have any ill will towards um, Mr. Dakota Weirs? No, I feel terrible that Dakota got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And if you knew that your product, Lush Fertilizer, was harmful, would you still have released it to the market? I nor Lush would ever want to cause environmental or health harm to anyone. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. You care about money. Uh, as much as the next person does. You need money to run a business. Yes, that is true. And so without money, your business would go under. Yes. But you make plenty of it. Um, objection, Your Honor. What's the relevance of this? Response. Um, it's relevant because I am talking about how the fertilizer will be baked and talking about the reason why it's not, and that has to relate to money. Yeah, Mr. Clayman, if you could get there a little more quickly, that'd be great. Uh, objection overruled. Okay. You don't bake your fertilizer. No, we do not. It's simply overkill. You said it was because it was just too costly. No, it's not necessary. Um, Your Honor. 
Um, the attorney is um, pestering my witness, and this is a true example of when Rule 403 is um, being administered. They are pestering my witness and trying to get um, an answer out of them that's not in their statement. All right, hang on one second. Mr. Rowe, it sounds like you're objecting to the phrasing of the question being argumentative and also- Yeah, argumentative to, question. And also to Rule 403. So let me get Mr. Clayman's response to Rule 403. I am directly quoting her statement, and so it cannot be deemed argumentative if she herself said it before. All right, well, let's, here's what we'll do. Mr. Clayman, go ahead and lay a little foundation for the fact that this witness has made a statement about this topic and then go from there. All right. Yeah. Um, baking your fertilizer would remove all toxins, would it not? Um. I believe so, but it's not necessary because there's been no uh, issues found within our fertilizer. And your own company ran these studies? Yes. And if these studies had found a different outcome, would your company have lost money? Uh, can you say the question one more time? Sorry. If the outcome of these studies had, be, had been different, would your company have lost money? Uh, yes, if they found anything that, uh, hurtful with our product. So that's a yes. Okay. Um, and you said that your company is the one that ran these studies? Yes. And now I've already established that your company needs money to function. And so if you were to lose money, that would not be in your own interest. Uh, No. So do you think there's a possibility that you may have changed the study slightly to show exactly what you wanted it to show? Absolutely not. No, nobody wants to cause any health or environmental issues. Okay. Then why don't you bake your fertilizer? Uh, it is costly, but it's not necessary. We have found no issues with not baking it, which gives us no reason to bake it. Even though it would remove all toxins and get rid of any sort of reason or any sort of cause of harm? No toxins have been found that are deadly or any issues that don't follow the law, so no. I was, you just said there were no amount of toxins? Uh, potentially, but it's not certain. There's no solid evidence of that. I was, the studies found there was an insignificant amount of toxins, correct? Yeah. So there were toxins? Yes. And then lush fertilizer is used by a lot of people, correct? Yes. It's used all over the world. Yes. So even with a low level of toxicity, it could harm people because there are just so many people using it. Potentially. So that's a yes. Um, can you say the question one more time? Even, there's, even with the low level of toxicity, it could cause harm because there are just so many people using it. Well, there's always uh, I, uh, So that's a yes. Yes, but it's within safety. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Doncourt, um, did your company do any research on Drufo? Uh, yes, we did extensive research on uh, whether it would be harmful for health. And the research, um, like what did it show? Uh, it showed that... Asked and answered. Overall. So what did the research um, show, Ms. Doncourt? Uh, it showed that our fertilizer was within the law and it would not cause any harm to anyone. Um, why didn't you bake the product? Uh, it's simply overkill. It wasn't necessary following, it followed the law and no, found no issues. And would the product have been released if it was harmful? No, absolutely um, not. Outside of federal safety? No, absolutely not. Uh, 
I nor Lush would ever want to cause environmental or health harm. No further questions, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Ms. Doncourt. You can step down. Further witnesses from the defense. Yes, Your Honor. I would like to call Skylar Weirs to the stand. All right, Mr. Weirs, you've already been sworn. Um, so Mr. Prentice, go ahead with direct whenever you're ready. Can you state your name and spell it for the record? I think Mr. Weirs is experiencing a little technical difficulty. Let's give it a second and see if it resolves. Yeah, Mr. Weirs, I don't know how much of us you can hear, but we are not catching anything you're saying. It's very broken up and your face is frozen on the screen. <laughs> Timekeepers, go ahead and pause the clock. Let's see if we can get Mr. Weirs sorted out. He might need to jump on a colleague's machine. Currently, we are setting up a uh, the witness on a different computer. We will be we'll your honor. shortly. Um, okay. We have a witness. The witness is here. Um, your honor. Um, yes. Can we pause time um, until we get the witness on? Oh yeah, yeah. I already said that the time should okay, be I paused. Okay, I just want to make sure because I didn't hear that. Oh. Hello, can you guys thank hear you, me now? Honor. Yes, Mr. Weirs. I think we've got All right, you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council, go ahead with direct whenever you're ready. Thank you, Your Honor. One moment. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Skyler, can you state your name and spell it for the record? Skyler Weirs, S K Y L E R. W E I R S. And can you tell me what is your occupation? Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a, I'm a journalist for the Rationalist Magazine. And uh, what is the Rationalist Magazine? Uh, we're a magazine that promotes scientific skepticism, and we write about various things such as agriculture. What kind of articles do you typically write at The Rationalist? Like I said, I write about usually things like agriculture and various other things. Right. And what do you typically do to write an article at said magazine company? I'll usually spend about a year or so doing research, uh, looking at various databases and articles to try and find what I can about the product or whatever it is that I'm writing about. Did you apply such a process to your article on Drufo? Yes, I did. Your Honor, the defense moves for Skylar Weirs to be admitted as an expert in agricultural technology. Objection, any objection or voir dire? Yes, of voir dire, Your Honor. All right, go ahead, Ms. Weiss. So Mr. Skylar Weirs, do you have any formal education? Uh, no, I do not have any college education. Do you have any background in chemistry or agriculture or anything really that would make you qualified to talk about this? Just the research that I do for my articles. Do you do the research on your own? Yes. I, like I said, I spent about a year doing that research. And what does this exactly entail? Just looking it up? No, I look at various databases such as the U.S. Department of Agriculture no further questions, Your Honor, but the plaintiff requests that Mr. Uh, Skyler Weirs is not submitted as an expert witness because of lack of formal background and credibility. 
All right, um, Mr. Prentice, let's be in a constructive sidebar here. Can you give me an offer of proof as to what expert opinion testimony you want to offer with this witness? Uh, yes. Um, the witness itself themselves have a number of facts about Lush Fertilizer, the company, and the different environmental benefits it provides. All right. I think what I'll do is I'm, I'm not going to admit the expert in the area of farming technology, but I'll admit the witness as an expert uh, in the field of investigative journalism. And if you want to ask about the type of research that the witness conducted, um, whether there is the existence or non-existence of articles that make certain conclusions, um, we'll allow that sort of thing. But I, I don't think this witness can talk about how farming technology works. Doesn't seem to be qualified. Does that really make sense? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, so Skylar, what sources did you use while writing your article on Truffaut? As previously stated, I'll use the United States Department of Agriculture and the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture for various articles. Thank you. And from your investigation in, into um, lush fertilizer, can you tell, if it's, tell us if it has any environmental benefits? Absolutely. Drufo doesn't need to be applied quite as often as other fertilizers and be, or yeah, Drufo doesn't need to be applied quite as often as other fertilizers. And because of the main ingredient being a bonding agent, it helps keep nitrogen runoff to a bare minimum, which helps keep soils and water populations nearby intact. So has Lush fertilizer shown dedication to decreasing nitrogen contamination? Absolutely. They donate 10% of their yearly income to various charities. And can you tell us, what has Blake Doncourt himself, themselves done to help decrease the contamination? They started a charity to actually help get rid of some of the nitrogen contamination in the Gulf of Mexico due to over farming and overuse of fertilizers that weren't quite as effective as the ones containing Drufo. And can you tell us, did any of your research point a clear link between Drufo and cancer? No studies have shown a clear link between Drufo and cancer. And they Objection, Your Honor, outside of witness expertise. Overruled. Okay, Skylar, can you tell us what greater implications this case might have on the fertilizer industry? Cases like this are not the first time that agriculture companies have been attacked. Cases such as the Monsanto company, which was the old guard of the fertilizer company, of the fertilizer industry, sorry. They were attacked in order to try and put them out of business and so is, uh, so is Lush now. And Skylar, can you tell us, do you, know, do you know Dakota Weirs? Yes, that's my twin. And are you close with Dakota? We're close, but not stereotypically close in the way that you might assume twins to be. And do you think that Dakota may have been caught up in a greater conspiracy regarding Lush Fertilizer and other fertilizer companies? Objection, speculation. Sustained. That is all, Your Honor. No further questions. Thank you. Cross-examination, Ms. Weiss. Yes, Your Honor. You are the twin brother of Dakota Weirs? Yes, that would be correct. Yet you are opposing her in this lawsuit against Lush Fertilizer. That is also correct. You know that Drew Film Lush Fertilizer are safe from your own research. Yes. And your own research is credible. Like I said, I've used some very credible sources in my research, so yes. Even though you do not have a college degree or any formal education? No, I do not have a college degree. You believe Lush Fertilizer has a target on its back? Yes, I do. You believe billions of dollars are being spent to take down Lush Fertilizer and Drufo? Yes, I would say so. You claim that there are no risks for modern agri agricultural products? I won't say no risks, but there are reduced risks using Lush's products. You'd admit that the research on whether Drufo causes cancer is inconclusive at best? Yes, it is inconclusive. 
You're testifying for lush fertilizer? Yes, I am. You're testifying for lush fertilizer and being paid? That's outside of my witness statement. Actually, it's not. You said in your witness statement that it was being implied that you were doing this for the money, so it implies you are also being paid. Oh, okay, then I guess, yeah. You and Dakota are close? Uh, like I said, yes, just not in the stereotypical way that you would assume. Your family was upset about you for going to college. For not going to college, but yes. Yes, for going. Your writing generates income? Yes, it does. It's lucrative? In a way, I do have to work a second job at Applebee's as a server. Yeah, you're freelance. Yes. And you have a bit of a gambling problem. Yes, I do. Sports bags. Objection relevance. This is relevant because it shows the uh, witnesses' money troubles and leads to questions credibility. Um, Ms. Weiss, help me understand how the, the witness's money troubles impact his credibility. The witness even said credibility. in his own statement that people were arguing against his credibility because he could be in it for the money. And your honor, and this just goes off of that. All right. It seems like if he gains any fame from this process, could make money writing about it. So I'll find that it is relevant and overrule the objection. And your parents were helping you out with money? Uh, they were for a while before my mom died. Yes, and your dad cut you off after that. Uh, he's cut me off, but as far as I know, I'm not out of the will yet. Yes, you and Dakota are the only beneficiaries, correct? Yes, that is correct. And your dad agreed to shoulder the cost of Dakota's medical bills if this lawsuit isn't successful? Yes, he has. And you're doing the right thing, right? I would believe so, yes. By trying to get your sister to lose a lawsuit. By trying to help and then, I mean, I guess I don't understand the question, sorry. So that's a yes. I, I wouldn't say so. You are trying to, you are helping the person going against your sister in this lawsuit. I'm helping defend an innocent company. So that's a yes. I guess so. And your sister losing this lawsuit would cause your dad, who has cut, who has cut you off, to pay for medical bills? Yes, that would be correct. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? No, Your, no, your Honor. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Weirs. You can step down. Further witnesses from the defense. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls Dr. Devin Williams to the stand. Dr. Williams, where are you? There you are. Hi, doctor. You're already sworn in. So, Mr. Kaiser, go ahead whenever you're ready. All righty. Uh, Hello there. Can you state your name and spell for the record? I'm Dr. Devin Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. All right. What's your current occupation? I lead the toxicology research and development labs at Lush Fertilizer, and I'm the outgoing chair of the company's ethics committee. All right. What's your current work experience? I started my career at Lush roughly a decade ago and have led the toxicology and labs for seven years. Do you have any other relevant experience? My education from undergraduate for PhD was completed at Colorado State University in Fort Collins. I also did a specialized post PhD program in pharmacotoxicology at the University of Utah. Uh, do you hold any accreditations? I hold various accreditations, including certificates in toxicology in Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Utah. I've also published a number of works on various topics related to toxicology and poison. Uh, do you have anything that would let us see this? Yes, I brought my CV along. It lists off my various accreditations, work experience, and PhD. All right. Uh, Your Honor, I request to have co-counsel present what's been marked as exhibit number nine. That's fine. All right, co-counsel, can you please stream exhibit number nine? Thank you much. 
Uh, let the record reflect that I'm showing opposing counsel a clean and unmarked copy of exhibit number nine. Record will so reflect. All right, thank you much. So what exactly is on your CV, doctor? All my credentials, including my education, certificates, published works, and past places of employment. Is this an accurate reflection of your education and work experience? Yes. Is this your CV as you know it? It is. Your Honor, I move for Dr. Williams' CV to be admitted as exhibit number nine. Any objection to nine? Um, objection to hearsay. Response to hearsay. Your Honor, this is a doctor. This is Dr. William CV, as he wrote it himself, and this also details his current work and education experience. Um, may I respond, Your Honor? Briefly. Um, hearsay is defined as an out-of-court statement offered for the truth of the matter asserted, um, and as this is an out of um, this is a party not in the courtroom right now, um, and there has not been enough reason for this to be admitted into evidence, um, then this is hearsay. Yeah, I'm gonna sustain the hearsay objection to this exhibit and the court will not admit exhibit nine. You can certainly ask questions about the doctor's qualifications. All right, uh, your honor, uh, the defense moves for Dr. Williams to be admitted as a expert in pharmacology and toxicology. Any objection or voir dire from the plaintiff? Um, I would like to conduct a brief voir dire, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Dr. Williams, you graduated from Colorado State University. I did. From the College of Pharmacy and Allied Health Professionals. I did. You also graduated from the University of Utah. I did a specialized post PhD program, yes. In pharmatoxicology? Yes. And you've been employed with Lush Fertilizer for about a decade. 12 years. And you also worked as a tenured assistant professor of forensic toxicology at the University of New Mexico College of Pharmacy. I did. You also worked in the Larimer County Office as a medical examiner toxicologist. I have. Um, and you've, you've published numerous studies. I have. On the forensic aspects of poisons the alteration in prolactin secretion in female overactomized rats, um, and a study of cross-reactivity of selected animal proteins. Yes. And you also teach four classes at the University of New Mexico. Um, I believe I only, yes, I teach four. Um, and you also have certificates from four states. This in toxicology. From Colorado. Yes. New Mexico. Yes. Wyoming. Yes. And Utah. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. The plaintiff does not object. All right. The doctor will be so qualified. You can continue, Mr. Kaiser. Thank you much, Your Honor. So, doctor, what is Drufo? Um, Drufo is a chemical binding agent that Lush uses in its fertilizer, which prevents nitrogen runoffs from occurring, which are bad for the environment. Why are nitrogen runoffs bad for the environment? Well, unused nitrogen is turned into nitrates by soil bacteria, and these nitrates are then carried into streams and lakes by irrigation, runoff, and rainfall, etc., leading to very dense algae blooms in the affected lakes and streams. This takes away the oxygen, depriving the fish of oxygen, killing them, and it can also harm har harbor dangerous bacteria that is harmful to humans. If true foot was so helpful, how come it's not more li widely used in the world? The European Union banned it. Why did the European Union ban it? Um, the European Union banned it because if you pour some Drufo in a petri dish and add the right soil bacteria, you'll get the same amount of nitrates as any other fertilizer. They banned it under the EU's new nitrates directive saying no new fertilizer could have so much nitrate runoff. And so since the, this, this isn't what happens in nature, though, they used an unrealistic test process that does not reflect what happens in nature. Correction narrative. I'll overrule the objection. I'll just ask Mr. Kaiser to go ahead and break up the testimony with additional questions. All right. Um, so, Dr. Williams, uh, Dr. Rogers claims that people exposed to Drufo experience higher rates of cancer. Are these claims substantiated? Um, these claims are not substantiated. The use of Drufo has not been correlated with statistically significant incident increase in the incidence of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. 
um, or any other cancer for that matter. Why am I saying it doesn't cause cancer? Because that's not how science works. If you take a large group of people, that could be all the people that live in Colorado, for example, a small number of them will develop non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. All right. Okay. Uh, how can the elevated rates of cancer in the study be explained? They're nothing more than sheer coincidence. You might be asking what I mean by that. So I'm going to use a small analogy to explain it. Let's say I have a pile of jelly beans, equal parts, and I pull out 10 jelly beans. The it's exceedingly unlikely that I'll pull five red and five blue. The it's even possibility I can pull 10 red and zero blue. Uh, are there any other issues with this study? Not only has the study not been peer reviewed and is unable to be replicated, the study is a comparison of farm laborers who use Drufo versus casual home gardeners. Uh, so what is peer review? Peer review is a process of a study being reviewed by scientists and not involved in the study to ensure accuracy, basically make sure nobody was biased when they made the study. Uh, why is the inability to replicate the study and outcome of the study an issue? The ability for a study to, to be replicated and achieve the same results shows that the study is unbiased and free of errors. All right. Uh, rewinding a bit, why is the comparison between farm laborers and gardeners an issue? Farm laborers and casual gardeners have completely different lifestyles, meaning they're ex fundamentally exposed to different environments. Farm laborers are fundamentally exposed to several more products than an everyday gardener would be. Compa it's would be exposed to. It's like comparing cornfields to flower beds. It's comparable to comparing apples to oranges. Overall, what is your reaction to this case? This misguided lawsuit is terribly sad. Yes, cancer is terrible, and my heart goes out to Dakota. However, Trufo is not the cause of such a tragic illness. There's no valid evidence. Uh, what is your perf what's your expert opinion on Trufo? Trufo is a beneficial product that is safe for humans and benefits the environment. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Williams, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You are employed by Lush Fertilizer, correct? I am. And you've worked there for 10 years? 12 years. You lead the toxicology research and development labs? I have for seven years, yes. And you've led them for seven years, yes. And Lush contains Drufo. I'm sorry, do you mean, I, I, I don't understand. Do you mean which products contain Drufo of Lush? <laughs> Because Lush, Lush is a company. Lush Fertilizer inside the U.S. contains Drufo, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, and Drufo is banned in the EU. It is. They use unrealistic testing processes to determine, and it was under the nitrates directive, because a no-new fertilizer can have so many nitrates run off. And under lab conditions and using unrealistic test methods, the EU determined that there's too much nitrate runoff. So that's a yes. Yes. I believe the, I said that. You are conducting tests to submit to the EU for reconsideration. I am. If the court were to rule against lush fertilizers, this would create, in your words, a whole host of new bureaucratic roadblocks for lush. Although I doubt that will happen, it would pro likely create that. However, I have no doubt that the jury will rule in favor of the defense. So that's a yes. Yes. So you're financially incentivized to testify that Drufo doesn't harm anyone. Objection opens. In your statement. I, I, I never said, can I, oh, I am happy to answer the question. Just please ask the question. In your statement, you have admitted that you may potentially have financial reasons for testifying in this case. I did say I have a financial bias. However, Dr. Rogers' financial bias is far greater. And you would like us to believe that you are also morally incentivized to testify. Yes. Yet your statement provides no grounds to support this. Um, it's outside of my witness statement. So as I understand it on cross-examination, I am allowed to answer in character. Let's move on. You are the chair of Lush Fertilizer's Ethics Committee. I am. The outgoing chair. Yeah. Lush's CEO, Blake Doncourt, has given you certain objectives. Mm, yes. To keep Drufo products cost-effective. 
Yes. And industry leading. I believe so. Your company is currently conducting a study. It is. A study you expect will prove that Drufo-based products lead to reduced eutrophication in real-world applications. Yes. The study has not been completed yet. Yes. But you have positive expectations. I do. Moving on. You have argued that all of the data looked at was consistent with users of fertilizers with Drufo not having an elevated risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma compared to users of other, other fertilizers. I'm sorry, can you please repeat the question? Yes. You have argued that in looking at the data, it was consistent that users of Drufo um, do not have an elevated risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma compared to users of other, other fertilizers. Yes, when comparing things, you need to compare apples to apples. Um, comparing someone who doesn't, isn't exposed to any fertilizers at all to people who are exposed to many fertilizers will lead to, lead to inaccurate results. We chose to compare Trufo to those who use other fertilizers. So that's a yes. Yes. This is a relative comparison. I believe so. A relative comparison of Drufo to other fertilizers. Yes. Drufo poses a lower risk of non-Hodgkin lymphoma comparatively. I believe it was within federal regulations. Yes, so it poses a lower risk compared to other fertilizers. Yes. But this is not saying that Trufo poses no risk. Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So, Dr. Williams, is the study done by Dr. Rogers flawed? Yes, it is. It has not been within. This is um, outside the scope of the cross. Response. Your Honor, this is asking about the study that Dr. Rogers did, claiming that Drufo causes cancer in users of Lush fertilizer. Response, Your Honor. Um, briefly. Under Rule 611D, it says that on, in a redirect, you must say within the scope of the cross, and as I did not address Dr. Casey Rogers' study within my cross, this is outside the scope of my cross, therefore making it invalid in a redirect. Yeah, I agree. I'm gonna sustain this objection. All right, thank you much, Your Honor. Uh, is the European Union ban on Trufo misguided? It is, it's not what happens in na nature, it's what happens in lab conditions that are unrealistic. All right, thank you much. Does any potential financial stake in WASH influence your expert opinion on Tufo? Of course not. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Doctor. You can step down. Further witnesses from the defense? No further witnesses from the defense, Your Honor. All right, the defense has rested, um, and the plaintiff, I don't believe, is entitled to put on a rebuttal case, so... We are at the point of closing arguments. Does anyone need a break before closings? No, Your Honor. All right. All right. Um, a no from the defense as well, Your Honor. Okay. Scorekeepers doing okay? Need a bathroom break? I'm good, I'm Your fine, Honor. Your Honor. No, I'm good okay. as well. Thank you. Okay. Let's keep rolling. Uh, closing argument for the plaintiff whenever you're ready. You're muted, Ms. Winbigler. There you go. Your Honor, may I reserve any of my remaining time for rebuttal? Yes. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Again, my name is Faith Winbigler, and I am the plaintiff in this case. The plaintiff called three witnesses to testify as to the defendant's guilt. Each witness testified, establishing the following by a preponderance of evidence. Mr. Dakota Weir's life has been significantly damaged by his development of non-Hodgkin lymphoma. He can no longer be a part of National Honor Society or play the piano, meaning he lost his grandfather twice. He was simply following the status quo, not taking extremely risky actions, or so he thought because due to the inactions of lush fertilizer in labeling the product as potentially cancer causing, everyone at Haven Landscaping felt no need to wear protective gear. If lush had taken the time just to warn consumers of the even if insignificant, even if not set in stone, still present and likely 
cancer risk, risk, and DRUFO, people would have taken preventative measures and Mr. Weirs would not be in the current awful situation he now is. A label on the package could have stopped the non-Hodgkin, could have showed him the true severity of what not wearing protective gear could do. Other fertilizers had warnings, but Lush's did not. Mr. Carson Durst has said the data found through Lush's studies was shaped, analyzed, and worded in a way that would receive the conclusion that was found. Exactly as Dr. Devin Williams said, when someone finds exactly what they set out to, always question their results. Carson Durst can corroborate that Don Court did just that. Dr. Casey Rogers has testified based on scientific evidence, that DRUFO is dangerous and has potentially carcinogenic impacts. We would also ask you to reject the defendant's theories of the case. In his opening, Mr. Kaiser stated that our case against lush fertilizer is riddled with holes, but he failed to neglect the biggest hole of all. What would have happened if lush would have just included a cancer warning on its product? We'll never know because they didn't, which by a preponderance of evidence leaves us to believe that Lush's negligence in mitigating the dangers of Drufo caused Dakota Weir's illness. Don Court was driven to release Drufo to the market relatively quickly. Skylar Weir's published studies on Drufo with limited expertise and no college education. Plus, even if we do not diminish his credibility based on his background or education, he has clear bias for being here today clear incentive for testifying the way he did. And although the defense would argue that Profit had no part in releasing Drufo quickly, they did not have defensible evidence to prove this. Dr. Williams only expects his study to show that Drufo is safe. It has not yet. He may have found facts, but he has not found conclusions. It is an important principle that people in our society be held accountable for their actions and their inactions. Lush failed to include a warning label of possible carcinogenic impacts. They failed their consumers. Negligence negates safety and profit was put over people. In conclusion, we would ask that you rule in favor of Mr. Dakota Weirs. Thank you. Thank you, Council. And could one of the timekeepers let me know if any time was reserved? Um, I have a minute and 23 seconds left. Okay. Thank you very much. Closing argument for the defense. Um, Your Honor, real quickly before I proceed with my closing argument, um, I just want to clarify something. Um, was the, um, I, real quick, um, I believe the person who conducted the opening statement and the closing statement was the same person, and I'm not sure if that's allowed in the rules. Response, Your Honor? Um, no, that's okay. This was covered in, um, in the judge's orientation. So don't, don't worry about it. Just, uh, okay. go ahead and pr I, proceed with your argument. I just wanted to double check just to make sure. Okay. And I'll just go, I'll go ahead with my closing now. Yep. Whenever you're ready. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the house that the plaintiff has built out of this case has numerous cracks inside of the foundation. The plaintiff needed to prove by preponderance of evidence that Lush Fertilizer was negligent in the administration of their product and test for safety of their product, and thus caused um, Mr. Dakota Weir's non-Hodgkin lymphoma that they are now suffering from. They also alleged that Lush Fertilizer hid um, information from studies that would reveal negative aspects of the studies. From this case though, the jury cannot find a preponderance of evidence needed to show that lush fertilizer is at fault and failed to properly warn users about the dangers. This negligence claim has a total of four aspects to it that need to be proved. These aspects are duty, a breach of that duty, causation, and damages. What the defense has been able to show is that lush fertilizer had a duty to make sure their product was safe and never breached that duty as their product was safe enough to put on that market and studies done did not bring a plentiful harm from the product. In this case, you heard from six witnesses, three from the plaintiff and three from the defense. To start, Ms. Blake Doncourt, the CEO of Lush Fertilizer, was able to exhibit the company's duty of protecting people in the environment by creating a safe product, a safe product that needed to use Drufo. 
Miss Doncourt has always strived to make the world a better place for all and needed to use those, um, sorry, needed to do, use that to carry out the duty by testing the product at the company with the tests being well within federal standards for safety and in the law, which was confirmed by Ms. Carson Durst, the plaintiff wait, witness. Mr. Skyler Weirs, a trusted investigative journalist, was able to affirm how much safer Drew is than practically all other fertilizers and pesticides, and how Lush Fertilizer was able to protect consumers by eliminating exposure to carcinogenic agents. Dr. Devin Williams, an expert witness in pharmacology and toxicology, was able to explain why the EU banned Trufo. This was because of insufficient studies done that do not replicate natural conditions, and the ban had no relation to insufficient or to concerns for cancer. It was just concerned over nitrates produced. It was also explained how Drufo is not correlated with an increase in non-Hodgkin lymphoma or any other cancer, because if you take a group of people, some of them are going to get sick. That doesn't mean that the fertilizer caused it. In Dr. Devin Williams' study, he was comparing fertilizers to fertilizers or apples to apples. Dr. Casey Rogers, on the other hand, a witness not only with an unreliable study, but one that was not peer reviewed and not brought to court today, compared farmers to gardeners to normal people apples to oranges, which is a completely irrelevant way to go about a study. Moving on, Ms. Carson Durst found little evidence to help prove the plaintiff's case as it only pointed to the safety of the product. The only unsafe aspect was that it was found as a possible carcinogen in your rats. Ms. Durst also went against a company agreement to expose lush fertilizer trade secrets to Terra's Greenery, where they now work, all because Ms. Durst got mad at Ms. Doncord and was fired. We finally rest to look at Mr. Dakota Weirs. Mr. Weirs did not take proper precautions while using the product, not only by not wearing proper protective gear that was advised not only by Lush, but also by Haven Landscaping, but they also did not use any trustworthy sources in research as they gathered their, all their information from a news leak, which could easily be false and from Google. As you can see, Lush was able to fulfill its duty to protect the people and the environment Lush didn't do anything that would harm anyone, anything that would endanger anyone, anything that would hurt a person and their lifestyle. The cracks in the foundation of the plaintiff's case will bring down the house one day or another. And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it's your job to decide if today is that, dear, is that day. Mr. Weirs, Lush Fertilizer and the defense are pained to see you in the state that you are in. And we are sending our hearts out to you in the light of how terrible of an occurrence this was. We are wishing you not only a safe recovery, but a speedy recovery. However, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you cannot find Lush Fertilizer negligent because they did everything that they needed to do to ensure safety, not only for the environment, but most especially for everyday people like yourself. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. And, um... Ms. Winbigler, you've got a minute, 23 seconds for rebuttal. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll keep this brief. The defendant may have exhibited their duty to protect consumers, but they did not exhibit that they upheld this duty. The fact that the plaintiff did not wear protective gear and that they are arguing based on this fact proves two things. That one, the fact that protective gear was even needed proves risk of harm. And two, the lack of warning label failed to indicate severity, as protective gear would have been worn if Mr. Weirs only knew. And though the defendant may argue there is no correlation between Drufo and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, there is proof that there is, or that there was at least sufficient chance of carcinogens, enough to put a label. Profit was put over people and their negligence negated the safety of consumers such as Mr. Dakota Weirs. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. And thank you to everyone who participated in the round. It was super enjoyable. Give us one second to finish our score sheets and submit them. And then I think we each get a minute or two to give you um, additional feedback.
Okay, my sh score sheet is submitted. Um, so Ms. Garrett and Ms. Noriega, just let me know whenever you've submitted yours and uh, we'll go from there. Mine submitted, thanks. Okay. Judge Garrett, are you good on your score sheet? Sorry, I'm almost done. It's just the, oh, no, the tapping no, no is worries. taking a second. Sorry. <laughs> not not a problem. Take your time. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Um, would you like to give any feedback to the competitors, Judge Garrett? Yes, certainly. All right, we are, we are asked to keep it specific and uh, to about one to two minutes. Okay. Um, I would say uh, generally everyone did a very nice job. Uh, clearly, you all have been working very hard at this, and doing this over Zoom is incredibly, incredibly difficult. Um, and so you all deserve a lot of credit for being able to be so flexible to adjust to doing this with technology and not live in a courtroom. Um, the general feedback I have for all of you is please learn how to impeach a witness. It's a fundamental skill for mock trial. Um, and there were a couple of opportunities where you could tell you knew you were supposed to impeach someone and you were trying to, and you had them read their statement and that's not really how you impeach someone. So please learn how to do that. Um, faith. There was um, an, 
uh, instance where you were directing your witness, Dr. Casey Rogers, who, by the way, at first I thought he was reading his statement because he went so fast. Um, and then I realized because of how he behaved on cross that he actually was just really excited. <laughs> so um, you did a very nice job of trying to get him to slow down by when you then were asking him the next question, you asked it really slow and really sort of gently. And so I think you, you know, you're trying to convey to him, you gotta slow down. And so I think you did a really nice job trying to control your witness when you're over video. And that's again, very hard to do. And I think you were sending him these nonverbal cues um, and you did a really nice job with that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, the one thing I would suggest to your team is when you want to confer with counsel, don't turn off your camera. Mute yourself, which I think is fine, but turning off your camera, I think, is, mm, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I find it to be questionable. So I would suggest not turning off your camera when you want to confer with counsel, because think about when you're in a courtroom, everyone can still see you. And so that's taking away the realism of what it would look like in a courtroom. Um, and let's see you all, we're trying really hard with your objections. You need to be better prepared with some of those, you know, what is relevance? What, what does it look like when you're leading? You know, um, when you lead, you don't ask a yes or no question, you suggest the answer. Your question needs to force the answer. So you shouldn't be asking um, what is, uh, or, you know, is it this? So the person could easily answer yes or no. You should be saying it is this, right? So that they really are boxed in all the time. So you're really controlling the witness. Um, so just kind of be stronger on some of the leading things. Um, I liked Alex, um, he was crossing, no, let's see, this was in the opening. He talked about the fact that this plaintiff it was a teenager and that's important. And that's a fact that probably should have come up more and more throughout the case and been brought out in direct examination and also brought up again in closing. Um, and so very few teams are bringing that out. And I think that was good. And you probably should have brought that up consistently throughout the case. Um, let's see. Uh, Braden did an excellent job um, with the witness Don Court, had a very nice flow and a really excellent organization. And Let's see. Um, Faith again had a really good cross examination. And also, Miss Weiss, I think you did a really excellent job when you crossed Skylar Weirs, much better than you did when you were directing your own witness. I think you felt you seemed sort of unsure of yourself on direct, but were super sure of yourself on cross, which is kind of the opposite of what we would normally expect because you can control cross I and mean, you can control direct a lot better than you can control cross. So um, it was nice to see you come back and be real strong on that cross. So you. good job overall, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Judge you. Garrett. Uh, Judge Noriega, where are you? Do we lose her? Um, I think we might have lost Judge Noriega. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, let me just add briefly to what Judge Garrett said, which I agree with all of her comments. And you all should be really proud of yourselves because it's round four. And I know it's super tiring and you're still, still doing it and still doing it well. Um, and you're very skillful with the technology, which is awesome. Like when, uh, when you had the witness difficulty defense with uh, Dr. Um, so Dr. Williams, no, it, it was it was the other witness. But when we had the you know technological difficulty and you guys just like quickly moved over to another computer, it's like you had practiced that or you had that backup plan in your pocket and you're just ready to deploy it. And I think 
stuff like that happens in the courtroom too. And you have to just roll with it and you can't take forever and you have to make it work. And you did, it was really nice. Um, I also thought the use of the screen share to deal with exhibits um, was done very skillfully. I agree with Judge Garrett, you guys you know, work on impeachment. There's a way to make that tighter um, and more effective. Um, but the use of the technology was really good on both sides. Um, two pieces of constructive criticism for everyone. Number one, if you can help it, don't end an examination on a sustained objection. Um, it just kind of looks weak. It may not be, um, but it just kind of looks that way. So always follow up with at least, you know, another question or two. Um, don't just give up because there's been an objection sustained, which is related to my other piece of feedback. And that is, don't be defeated or deflated if an objection is sustained. That doesn't mean you can't get the information that you're trying to get. Just think about it. Maybe you didn't approach it in exactly the right way, but you can get there. Um, and Ms. Weiss, I thought you had, you had some good stuff that you wanted to get out um, a couple of times on direct and you, you were close and I think you could have gotten there and there was an objection and it was sustained and both times you were just like, ah, I'll just move on, which real lawyers do that too. So um, like, don't, don't feel bad about that, but you don't have to give up on those topics just because an objection gets sustained. Just think about another way to get there. Um, and both sides, I think, experienced that during the round. Um, Mr. Prentice, I wanted to compliment your cross-examination. I thought you had really good, quick questions that made good, understandable points, like pointing out that no other employees got sick despite behaving in the exact same way as the plaintiff, uh, the, the alleged victim. I, I thought that that was a really good point, like, hey, well, if everybody else is wearing short sleeve shirts and not wearing respirators and not um, washing their stuff, like, why don't we have a whole bunch of people with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, if that's how you get it? I thought that was a good point. Um, I thought it was good to point out that the victim or the plaintiff did not follow the safety precautions that uh, her boss told her to, or his boss told him to, um, you know, like, if you're told wear a respirator, wear long sleeve clothing, and you're like, well, I'm just not gonna do that. And then you get cancer. It seems to be at least partly on you. And that's, so I thought those were really good questions. And it just, it rolled really quickly. I think these crosses can be like five minutes um, if you want them to be, and they can be really effective. And um, that one certainly got off to that type of a start. Um, I thought Mr. Rowe, I thought you had a really good cross also um, focusing on the one English study and how it was different from, um, or how it did not look at the effects of the chemical in humans. Thought that was a good point to make. Um, and pointing out that the in-house study was sort of incomplete, um, that it didn't really form any conclusions, that it said further research needs to be done. Like if the jury is being asked to hang its hat on this study that itself says, we don't really know. Um, I thought you did a really nice job um, pointing that out. Um, and then lastly, um, Ms. Windbigler, uh, you did an excellent job of keeping composure when the other side's witness was just messing with you, like not answering your questions or, you know, answering the question and then providing a whole bunch more, um, you know, information that you didn't ask for. Um, you didn't, you didn't freak out. You didn't, you weren't rude to them. You were very patient and you're just like, okay, so that's a yes. And that's what you should do rather than being like, Hey, I only want you to answer yes or no, because in a real courtroom, if a witness drones on and on and on like that, it doesn't help them or their side of the case. So it's best to just let them do it. And then after they stop droning on say, okay, so that's a yes. Or, so that's a no. And you did that really well. So um, kudos to all of you. I wish I could, you know, talk to you for 10 more minutes, but um, we should not do that. So uh, I think, is this the last round or do we have now semifinals and a final? Um, that was the last round. Okay, this is the last round. Well, congratulations to everybody and uh, we'll see you at the next tournament.
Thank you so Thank much. You, Great job. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor.